you can see here in the left view the camera is positioned basically at the zero Z axis level. Our model and our building is sort of up high on the hill so we're gonna have to move that camera up and so I'm just gonna grab both the camera and the target using the selection tool. I'm gonna click here on the move tool and I'm gonna drag that up roughly there. We can get very specific later but I just kinda wanna get it in place. Here in the viewport where it says perspective I'm gonna right click click on cameras and then you can see my camera there listed physical camera 01 and there it is so now when I move my camera up and down you can see my camera view change which is really helpful now when I'm setting up my camera position then I can kind of fine-tune it and put it exactly where I want it that's a pretty good spot and at this point I'm just trying to mimic sort of that initial rendering that we're trying to sort of get to so that's a good angle so if i click on that i'm just going to quickly render this out see where we are in our lighting and our rendering so everything seems to be working pretty good but i think i'm going to go back to the material editor here and i know we dropped in the so we currently have a sunset i'm going to go for a little bit more of a daytime look here so i'm gonna switch to a different hdri image and i think i want this at 45 degree my horizontal rotation so i want the light in this case to be behind me so that it can kind of go through these windows that are on the front of the building so i'm gonna put that and hit render All right, so far so good. The exposure is not terrible here. I think we're kind of on target for where we want to be. But one of the things that I kind of want to go through a little bit and explore is the use of the exposure control here in the V-Ray frame buffer to fine tune that exposure control through the camera. And when I look at my camera parameters, I do want to double check a few things. Lens, target, everything seems pretty good. I think we're in good shape so I think the defaults are fairly standard there's a few things we can dive into obviously you know focal lengths and apertures and sort of field of view things that will make our, our rendering angle a little different rendering exposure if I go back to rendering and exposure control it's currently driven here right through our photographic and these settings right that we have neutral white balance should be pure white one of the things that the frame buffer is really great for is to sort of fine tune those exposure values especially when you were starting to talk about the interior views as well you'll find that you know you can keep the same lighting solution or intensity of your V-Ray light dome and just vary the exposure of cameras inside and outside to get really good results I think one thing that I've seen before that a lot of people do unnecessarily really is when they put a camera on the inside of the building and they're getting dark results the tendency is towards adding more lights to make things brighter when in reality all you have to do is just let more light come into the lens to brighten things up it's not always necessary to add more lights which also impacts the speed of the rendering one thing to keep in mind is the more lights in your scene the slower the rendering will be because there's more to calculate. There's more light bounces, there's more color bouncing, there's a lot more things going on every time you add a light. So if you can keep your light count to a minimum, it's also gonna help your rendering speed. Mm -hmm.